The Eyeball presents Talk Show, filmed entirely on the night of February 14th from around 8.30 to about 2 in the morning. During the Big Style Show, a notable gathering of fashionables at 800 East, the Artist Cooperative. Talk Show was a formal, informal, conversational format television program. A showcase for artists, non-artists, to espouse their philosophies, non-philosophies. What do you have to say to these people? Okay, I can't. I can't. Good evening, and welcome to the program. Our topic tonight is transsexualism. To my right, I would like to introduce you all to Benny Peru. Thank you. Those of you that have seen David Lynch's Wild of Heart might recognize Betty. Uh, she is the next of kin of the dearly departed headless Bobby. And Betty um, is something of a poetess and uh, as well as a fashion player. So would you uh, give us a little uh, look at your outfit? Yeah. Well, before I begin, I'd like just to tell you a little bit about Bobby. Bobby's a good man. He's not as evil as you might think. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> anyway, Bobby, when he was in Vietnam, he wrote me a poem. And in this poem, he told me what it's like over there. And so I'm going to read you my poem. Oh, by the way, uh, Yes, yes. For this, on your new stand. this is called Terminus Tales. This was originally Atlanta's name before it became Atlanta. Terminus. Okay, back to Bobby and his poem. This is called Bobby's poem, obviously. And it goes like this. Red of blood mixed with charred black skin. Putrid smell of rotting flesh and rotting limb. Death and maiming. Let's do a killing spree. Yeah, while in the Gulf of Tonkin, taking life to set him free. A musty smell of a pussy getting wet. Have you said, fuck me yet? Uh, I'm just a jackrabbit running all around that hole. Let me hear you say, fuck me, before I let you go. And yeah, I gotta give old sailor a hand. Did that dog bury it in the sand? He was a dead man, yeah, as he was walking out that door. Now he's all shot and filled with lead. No time left. He's just shot off his head. But I don't feel sorry or have pity on him. I've taken a life, he said, and it set me free. That's Bobby for you. Piece. Well, you know, Chili, I'd like to read one of my poems for Valentine's Day. Well, and it's in Terminus Tale. I'm sitting right next to you and I can't hear a word you say. That's okay, they can. Okay, this one's called Redneck Love, and it's done by a friend of mine named Copacetic Chris. I want a girl who drives more comfortable. Oh, okay. I want a girl who drives a truck, one who can shift the gears and not get stuck. Uh -huh. And if she has four on the floor, I can't help but love her more. I heard that. But if she's just a fling for fun, I'll win her over with my gun. Mm. Yeah, I'll teach her how to point and shoot before I finally give her the boot. To find a girl who can party and drink without getting mad if I get sick in the sink. That's a girl I want with her a while, yeah. Even if she has a toothless smile. Yeah, baby. Of course, it's me who's put out all those teeth, all the while accusing her of being a cheat. And that girl of mine, she'll love it and come back for more before she finally walks out that door. Justify, brother. And you know, that girl will love my horse, probably more than me, of course. 
Yes, you'll have a bouffant do with platinum air. Want to have my kids and go on welfare. Yeah, don't you want to give her a whirl? Don't you just love a redneck girl? Cut that out, Chili. Okay, I want to read one more. Well, I think that's just about enough. Uh, Can I have one more? See? Okay, what this is, what this is called The Way of Things. Oh, my heart's broken and crumpled. This is a family program, so... Uh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. This is called The Way of Things, and it's a favorite of my friend Terry Hardy's. It goes like this. Gay love, straight love. Don't you just hate love? Gay rights and straight fights. Civil liberties in the spotlight. Gay sex or straight sex? Just give me some great sex. A gay man and a straight man, both using their own hands. Yeah, there's a gay gal and a straight gal. You better not get in their way, pal. While homos and heteros are out looking in the discos, you got lesbians and thespians, both playing to the world they're in. While transvestite meets Mr. Uptight, it's enough to leave you both in a fright. Butch Dyke sees Vanna White and says, hey baby, I wish you were with me tonight. Bye guy and bye gal, with the sodomy laws, they'll soon both be in jail. And there's a guy celibate and a gal celibate, but you know, they both just say to hell with it. Thank you very hell much, Chili. Yeah. Hell with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you next week. If we, we, we got some stories to tell. When did it start? Like, what? It started back, it was a little play called Our Town, right? Right. And now look at Our Town. Look at it. Look at Our Town. It's like, and so you remember, Ed, when we were going to high school together, uh -huh. And you came up to me one day. Don't you even try it. You came up to me in the hall one day, and you said, Donna, teach me to be as cool as you. I remember that. I taught you well. In fact, there comes a time when the student it sees the teacher's abilities. Uh -huh. And I'd say the time has come tonight. Tonight, this is it, isn't Tonight, it? Tonight, this is it. This is the beginning, anyway. This is what we talked about. Crazy. What we dreamed about. It's like, well, let's look into the camera and, like, just like. Are we on? Yeah, are we on? It's like, well, we're talking. We're looking we're into talking. the camera. We've known each other for. What has it been, Ed? 17 years? 17 now. years. 17 years. So, it well, all started. Well, let's talk about fashion. Let's talk about fashion. Fashion is, um, what are your feelings about fashion? I want to interview you, Donna. Fashion to me, well, it's, it's a personal expression of who you are, your soul. It's, um, it's personal, you know? It's a soul thing. Uh -huh. And we're two souls. We are definitely two souls. What style? What is style? Style. Style is who you are. And it can change. You can change your style every day. Let's dance. Let's dance, man. <laughs> Let's chair dance. Remember how I used to dance in my living room? How we used to dance in the living room. Exactly, I remember. We put those 45s on. We get crazy. <laughs> we were quite a pair. I, re I remember that. I remember that. We still are. I remember that. I remember that. I remember the time. I remember. I remember. But it doesn't matter because now it's what matters. But all of that led to this. All those crazy dances. All those crazy.
Saturday afternoons, we're supposed to be studying. And this is our, our town. Ours. Our time. Our town, our time. This is it. We're supposed to be studying, but we dance. Yeah. And we sang. Well, that's good, right? Remember? Remember. That's Agnes good. and Willis. Agnes and Willis. Are you ready? I think that's it, though. I think, I think that's it. I think we said everything. That's it. I think our destinies are entwined, and we're going to bigger, better, greater things all the time. Here we go. As we know. experiment on dead, <laughs> dead air time. Uh, and bad fashion. Yes. And the band has lots of things to talk about in his private life. <laughs> this one. I, I, can't, I can't really, I can't hear. I can't hear myself. He just doesn't want to, he just doesn't want to talk about it. Okay. Okay, we're we're here with Julian Helms, who's one of the sponsors of tonight's fashion extravaganza. Oh wait, no, we're here with Quentin, one of the attendees here at the fashion show. I think you need sponsors and attendees. It, it's kind of cerebral, isn't it? There's a lot going on. You know, Quentin backstage, the comment was made that um, in London, when they had this sort of event, people are much more hyped and rushing the stage. Well, what's the difference exactly between Atlanta and London, really? Well, well being that Atlanta is kind of provincial doesn't necessarily mean you're not in touch with fashion. People here in Atlanta are smart, they're very wise, and just because you see someone dressed up in a plastic raincoat or whatever doesn't mean anything, Gus. That's probably just your friend. I want to ask you something, then, while you're talking about that. Okay. Do you think that wearing a blue shirt and a red tie, is that fashion, or is that really very sad? kind of stuff. I mean, is that an expression of some sort of fashion? It's an expression of good taste nowadays. Huh. Like vast regions are good taste? Well, if you accent them with the right jacket and the right attitude. Now, now you're a very globetrotter. You've been everywhere. Are other people in other countries wearing blue shirts and red ties? I'm afraid they are, except in parts of Africa where the, the tie is optional. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but everybody wears the coat, so don't worry about that. Where are people most comfortable? In their clothes or in their bodies? Generally in their living rooms, unfortunately, in America nowadays. Everybody watches too much TV. They should all be here right now enjoying all of this fashion for us right now. I know. So, so, well. Well, we can just pan the camera and see all the wonderful people here. Yeah, I know. Let's take a look at all the beautiful people. Everybody isn't on stage. Oh, look at that flat top. That's beautiful. That looks good. And she's looking to mirror, but she's wearing the beautiful royal blue that's so hot. Oh, over here, the, the bra. The bra. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Definitely. Now, now she looks withdrawn, but she's at a very happening event. What's going on? But that bright red color does make her stand out. So. Definitely. So people are looking subdued, but really they're waiting to have a good time. Well, sometimes when fashion's very high velocity and you, everybody's in loud colors, you might want to wear something just dark enough so you stand out. It works both ways. I see here one standing out, and I think that the height of hair has something to do, to do with standing it. out. Yeah. Well, it's definitely the height of hair. Yeah. Come closer. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely the height of hair. Come on, and it's don't definitely, be shy. It's definitely the layer of makeup. Well, I, I think she's too busy entertaining the crowd. Definitely. 
Remember, it's not just on stage, it's in the crowd, it's all over here. That's true, but what's exactly happening when you're pushing past people? Well, one runway modeling happening, it's just runway modeling, but on a different level, the floor. Well, it's not a secret because I'm telling it on tape, but there are so many nice little tightly packed butts in Silver LeMay. Sir Richard Burton. 
Oh, this is Roy C. Burton, as in Sir Richard Burton. And uh, he's a famous local poet, and he's a famous guy. And uh, what else can you say for yourself? I, well, I have testicles like a goat, and they're full of juice. I'm not Sullivan. I'm horny as hell. I can respect you as a person, but still, I have testicles like a goat. <laughs> what else? Is that that's a that's a, a male goat? I take it. <laughs> Pretty much so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Female goats don't have testicles. What 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 kind of poetry do you write? Was that a poem? Yeah. Is that what you call a poem? Yes, a free poem. And uh, a lot of uh, people say that my poetry has kind of a zen flavor. Oh yeah, who says that? Rick Berman. Oh. Rick Berman at Berman Gallery. Must be true. Huh? Must be true. If Rick said it, it must be. Hey. Hey. Uh, what else? What, uh, how long you been writing poetry? Oh, about 40 years. How long you been performing it? Oh, about a year and a half. Yeah, is it hard? <laughs> Not for me, hell. I'm a bit of a show off. <laughs> Do you have any uh, favorite poets of your own? Any favorites that I wrote? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, who's your main inspiration? Who, uh, who do you take your style from? Uh, nobody. I just started writing. Oh yeah. And, uh, and Ed Woodham said that's good stuff, and uh, I always dismissed it as, um, you know, just. Just folly. I, I wrote a song, I wrote a poem about uh, my chest puberty. My puberty was chased. And each day I hoped for an end to this virtuous thing. When that glorious day of virginity loss finally arrived, it was a disappointment. The fault wasn't hers or mine. Too much anticipation made it inevitable. I just need practice was my conclusion. And I practiced a lot to become a sex machine. But machines don't feel. One of my many. That's sad. Well, machines don't feel. That's really that. sad. Well, maybe they'll invent one that does. <clears throat> okay. That's Next it. interview. That's it. Um, good job. Good job. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Okay. Hi, I'm Jennifer, and this is Benita, and Benita is here to tell us what she wants to do with her life from this point on? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to continue to be confused? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I that's a good goal. Yeah. I mean, always unexpected. Uh-huh. So kind of a spontaneous confusion. A what? Spontaneous confusion. <laughs> yeah, spontaneous confusion. Yeah, like spontaneous combustion. So I kind of am suspicious of cameras. Yeah. Okay, well, 
Disagree with his advertisements? Yes, but I'd make them at the same time. You make advertisements? I make advertisements and yet I disagree with them. <laughs> Paradox. Is that something that you can still understand having only a portion of your brain? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but let me ask you could anyone having a whole brain understand the paradox of a lobotomy? No, not really. You've got to be there. It's a tragic situation and one that can't continue. How do you like my, my saran wrap here? Beautiful. You know, it keeps you warm, too. Amazing. Wanted activist striving to help women become more than just the second sex, and now she's concerned with saran wrap and keeping warm in Beautiful. February. Beautiful. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Great. Marshall, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 